one and we are live okay hi everyone welcome to another episode of our busa secret show today we have the privilege to invite green packet management to come here with us now this green package berhad company is a very very hot stock um when we are doing facebook live or whenever we share some posts um many people has been asking us hey uh, what do you think about green packet right is the one of the most active stock and we have seen the share price being very volatile going up a lot then um recently it has subsided but there's a lot of news ongoing and announcement so rather than we share our opinion which we may not know fully what it is why don't you join us here today and learn directly from the management one thing that you may not know about uh, green packet if you're new in the market is green packet is like the original unicorn before we even have this word unicorn is the original tech counter in the malaysia uh, stock market okay so please tune in all the way until the end because in 20 30 minutes time we have a q and a where you can engage with the management but before that let me pass the floor to rondi to share about uh, what he's looking forward uh, in today's sharing hi rondi yeah hi everybody so just a short introduction about stockbit malaysia first um stockbit is actually a fintech startup and is a social networking platform for stock traders and investors it's a place where you can discuss you can learn and you can analyze stocks um and actually we are turning 2 years old soon in KLC um and right now we are actually building a growing and a very healthy community to um to narrow the information gap uh, for traders and investors in KLC so um as a content writer in stockbit today um and as well as I'm personally a tech enthusiast and also an angel investor to startup companies I'm actually very excited to be talking to um uh, CC Kwan and the Green Packet team as you know I feel like they are at the forefront of technology and innovative Malaysia in the future so what I would like to take away from today is really to see if Green Packet is more than just a trader company you know um to understand the business the businesses as well as I can and see if there is any potential for investment in the company um that's that's my introduction um i think now we will have a short video from green packet
Okay. <coughs> so, Rondi, maybe you can let's invite Mr. C.C. Kwan, um, the founder and yes. CEO of Green Packet, to share with us an uh, open remark on what today's sharing will be all about. Hello, C.C. Kwan. Hi, Rondi. Hi. Hi, everyone. Yep, we can hear you. Yes, Randy, please continue. Um, no, we are done. So uh, it's your it's your presentation. Okay. All right. Thank you, Randy, and um, I mean, thank, um, I'm extremely excited to be here uh, to share really a little bit about uh, a green packet. You know, how do we design the whole group to really help Malaysia? Uh, even the whole Southeast Asia uh, to move to the next level in terms of digital transformation. Uh, I'm extremely excited uh, today having all of you joining us on this session. So actually, it's really our first time that we are start engaging uh, from uh, our retail investor. Uh, thank you to Rondi and Mintik of uh, giving us this opportunity. So today I'm having both my uh, executive director and also my CFO K Tan, uh, to, and and also who uh, my CSO that just joined us for the last one and a half months. Uh, K has been an old buddy of mine for we know each other since uh, uh, thirty years ago. So we were uni mates, and today we are still continue building on the company. But today is so special to have all of you join us tonight. But also first time that we are sharing our journey and the future with all of you. And most exciting that it's just five minutes ago, everyone from my family, from my wife and my four kids, are all are diving in in this session and looking at my sharing together with my team. If I'm really looking at the team today about green packets, we're talking about really the rebirth of unicorn. Uh, uh, just imagine, you know, year 2000 when I start, I, when I founded a company in Silicon Valley, and in 2003, after the dot com bubble burst, we are we are moving the hash back to Malaysia. So with a 20 million contract from China Telecom and Lenovo, then then we managed to uh, list our company back in year 2005, and uh, and we become the first unicorn. Uh, at the time when we uh, listed the company, the market cap was only 100 million. And uh, in two years, we had grown to a 3 billion market cap company. So before the term of unicorn come about, uh, we were actually the first tech unicorn. But today, this year, we are celebrating 20 year anniversary. Actually, I was away from Green Packet for the last five years, and Kay was uh, taken over the basement for myself. And uh, I only start coming back up, you know, after we sold off our subsidiary to TM. I was with uh, Telecom Malaysia for two and a half years. Then, over the, then after that, on the two and a half years, uh, we have really uh, set up the long term strategy and the growth plan. Uh, for green packet, even though uh, P1 was a little bit overshadowed, as a lot of people know about green packet because of P1, but actually, both our traditional or if you see the legacy business, uh, last rev revenue is still more than 500 million. But over the last three years, after you know, I uh, left TM, we have set up the long term goal vision, right, uh, for the group. So really today, I think, you know, uh, last quarter, uh, just a few days ago, we are announced uh, is, is our first quarter that we turn EVITA positive. Uh, after three years, we get into the transition journey. Uh, I think a lot of building block and cornerstone that we have designed that will fuel the growth of the future of the company. And, and I wish to share with you tonight uh, with, with, with my team here together. So with that, I think you know we will start our presentation of sharing with you uh, a little bit of about our last twenty years journey. We want very very important for you to understand, of course, the up and down 
uh, of the company, but we always be around where because we are building the business for long term. We are building the creating the value for shareholders. So we want you to understand overall, even though our legacy business contribute very good, also profitable, but I really the future is going to be important and the legacy business we have transferred on the future trend and of all the uh, new businesses that we are building in are all Okay, we'll move on with the presentation. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, let's share the screen. Okay, uh, next. Okay, let us start by walking you through the green packet business pillars so that you understand what business we are in, what, what space we are operating in. So, we have two pioneering uh, pillars uh, on the left, on your left. You will see the solution pillar and the communication pillar. These are our pioneering pillars. In the solution area, we manufacture wireless broadband devices, uh, media players, things like IPTV set top boxes. Uh, we provide the equipment for 4G and 5G in premises. Uh, in fact, we will be at the verge of launching our 5G uh, customer premise uh, equipment very, very soon. Um, in the communication space, we are in the business of wholesale of voice minutes and data, and we are venturing into the new space of A to P SMS. Uh, if you do a banking transaction and you get a SMS notification for authentication, that is an example of what A to P is. Um, now, in this two legacy of, of pioneering business, we are going to be adding on, we hope, in the near future, new business that is going to expand on their growth. On the solution side, we are in the process of awaiting the results of our Filtera bid. We have a lot of confidence in the semiconductor space. Um, in, in case uh, you're not aware, uh, our E and E export contributes 38% of Malaysia's export, of which 52% are semiconductor based. And Filtera is a very key part of that value chain. It is uh, has a very big role on the front end of the E and E value chain. We have a very strong back end, but also in partnership with our domestic as well as foreign uh, partners that we're going to bring in uh, for the acquisition of Dutera, we will be able to help Dutera optimize its utilization and also to be able to create new opportunities for Dutera to continue to begin uh, to to continue to grow. Uh, so that's in the solution space, which is essentially about devices and, uh, and also software. Now, in the communication space, some of you may have heard that we are looking at investing in hyperscale data center. So data center is a fast-growing uh, business in Malaysia. Uh, based on MDEX statistics, we are expected to grow from 54 megawatts to 159 megawatts, I'm sorry, to uh, 104 megawatts in the next five years from 2019 to 2000 and, uh, uh, 2024. Now you'll be wondering uh, what is this megawatt thing, right? So to give you an idea, 10 megawatt conservatively is the space of about 180,000 square feet. Uh, so in our plan right now is we intend to invest in these hyperscale data center that really complements our communication business pillar because we will wholesale the capacity from the data center, right? So that gives you a glimpse of uh, the pioneering business that we currently still maintain and they are doing well, they're turning around. Uh, in fact, uh, communication uh, is uh, EBITDA positive for quarter three of 2020. Now, in the last three years, we have ventured into the new area. You will uh, see to a little bit to your right, the digital services. Essentially, for the last few years, we were in the fintech and the prop-tech space. This includes uh, what you commonly see as uh, products such as e-wallet. Uh, behind the scene, we have the payment gateway where we process the transaction. We also provide wallet as a service. You may have uh, experiences with uh, retailers which provide you with wallet service, but actually the entire solution is provided by companies such as us. 
So it is uh, entirely branded to them, but actually the system behind it is all belonging to companies such as uh, ours. So we also are uh, have been in the PropTech space for the last couple of years. This helps uh, in the space of property management, digital management, smart parking. We have a license plate recognition technology. And this came to the forefront during the pandemic because um, people were looking for contactless and contactless uh, type of um, you know property management system. So um, things like uh, facial recognition, AI cameras, and all that will fall into this space. Uh, you would have heard about our partnership with Tencent, which is a 10-year partnership, and uh, we will be, together with Tencent Cloud, offering our various cloud-based services, which include managed services, software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. You may also have heard about our uh, proposed uh, acquisition of Zendity. Uh, which is in the process of closing, and I think we will close that deal in the next couple of weeks, uh, probably before the year is out. Zendity is well known as a provider for EKYC, and this is going to be a big growth space because all the banks and financial institutions will now need to have EKYC capability, and we are in the right place at the right time pro to provide them with the solution. Uh, also in the news in the last couple of months is our attempt to uh, we will be applying for a digital banking license and the application is likely to open early 2021. And if you look at uh, the services and solutions that we have been offering in the digital space, we are very well placed to be able to compete uh, for a digital banking license. Uh, the other two pillars to the right, um, one of which, which is very interesting, is the AI and IoT pillar. This is uh, handled through our associate company. Uh, we own 28% of uh, G3 Global. And this is where the AI hub development, you may have seen it in the video, uh, in collaboration with Time and China Harbor. This is going to be the vehicle that will be undertaking the AI hub development. And lastly, to the far right, uh, we have divested, uh, like Siti mentioned, our uh, legacy uh, small uh, holding in Weeby. And uh, so that has also enabled us to clean out our balance sheet, which is essentially zero bearing, and we will be able to gear up uh, to be able to invest in our digital services uh, in the near future. Next slide. Okay, now uh, we are pivoting into digital in a big way, and it's very easy to remember what we are getting into, the businesses that we are getting in into. It is essentially just like the nursery rhyme that you were seeing when you were young. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A is for artificial intelligence, B for blockchain, so things like Bitcoin, C is cloud computing, we spoke about Tencent Cloud, B is big data, obviously a data center is part of it, but also data analytics. E is internet of everything, actually it's internet of things, but uh, we change it a little bit and call it internet of things, of, of everything. Uh, basically, these are devices uh, that are connected to the internet that is going to make life a lot more richer for all of us. And of course, 5G is 5G, uh, which is, uh, FG rather is 5G. Uh, basically, this will be the career, uh, carrier in which uh, a lot of our services are going to be uh, uh, sent uh, to the customers and also to the enterprises. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, if you remember that, that's what a uh, green packet is today and going to be tomorrow. Next slide. Okay, um, some key highlights here today, uh, some of which I have mentioned, I think our, the turnaround of our communication pillar and, uh, and we are quite confident also that our solution pillar will be turning around in the near quarters. We've completed our first tranche of private placement of 10% with the second tranche in progress. 5% has been completed, another 5% is expected to be completed in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we have unbound, uh, unwinded the EMTM with uh, telecom, so that brings our balance sheet to near zero gearing, allowing us to gear up to invest in the new digital businesses. Tencent Cloud, our exclusive uh, partner in Malaysia for the next 10 years for cloud-based services. Zenity is our EKYC solution, and it also uh, really strengthens our ability to compete for digital banking license. G3 Global uh, has received the uh, letter of intent from uh, Technology Park Malaysia to develop the AI part uh, in uh, Bukit Jalil, Kuala Lumpur. Some of the other key initiatives in the pipeline, which I've also mentioned, digital banking, and we are awaiting the results of our bid for Silterra from the government at Susana National.
Next slide. Uh, a little bit of highlight about our associate company, uh, G3 Global, and this is the vehicle, that, like I mentioned, that will undertake the development of the AI park. Uh, we have received the LOI for the 220-acre AI park development. The GDP is expected to be about 30 billion over a 20-year period. And right now, we are in the process of discussing the terms with Technology Park Malaysia. And uh, I think uh, you should watch this space in the next year. We should have a lot of updates on the AI Park. Uh, and one of the anchor development of the AI Park will be the Hyperscale Data Center. So just to be clear, the Hyperscale Data Center will be a communication business. It's an infrastructure business. It's an asset that is owned under communication from which Tencent and Green Packet will be able to take some of those capacity and offer them as cloud services under digital services. And then finally, the construction of the property itself will be undertaken by G3 Global. And it's very likely that the uh, asset will be located in uh, AI Park. Next. I just want to give you some group financial highlights before handing over the time to Kay to talk about the segmentals. So at the group level, next slide, in terms of revenue, quarter on quarter we've improved by about 12%. Uh, basically, the revenue has improved uh, across the segments, uh, with the only exception of digital services where we were really impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, as uh, most businesses are impacted. But if you look at communication and you look at uh, solutions, we have improved on the top line. Next. In terms of the EBITDA, we are very pleased that at a group level we have become EBITDA positive by a small uh, by a small fraction, but nonetheless to be in EBITDA positive is a very good sign. And again, across the different segments, there are improvements in the uh, EBITDA performance. Um, and uh, with the exception of solution, uh, Kay will explain to you we have a one-time uh, impact from our MyTV uh, exposure. Uh, he will explain to you why uh, the solution performance is as such at the EBITDA as well as the PAT level. Next. At the PAT level, uh, again, we have uh, improved quarter on quarter. We have uh, narrowed the uh, profit, uh, the loss after tax to 7.7 uh, million this quarter. And again, you see improvement in all sectors uh, with the exception of solution, which is impacted by the MyCB exposure. So with that, I hand over the time to Kay for him to talk to you through the segmental financial. Thank you. Yeah, good good evening, everybody. Um, thanks, thanks, Ku. Uh, if uh, you know, uh, if I may share a little bit on some of the segmental financials, and we'll dive deeper into the areas uh, that Ku mentioned just now. Our existing businesses of solutions, communications, and uh, digital services. And uh, what are some of the things that we see? What is the market? How we uh, target to actually penetrate or go into this market to actually scale further? And also our quarter three results. Uh, yeah. So on the solutions business, for those that are unfamiliar, we actually sell uh, wireless broadband devices. Now, what are these wireless broadband devices? This would be what you see as your Wi-Fi router at home. When you subscribe to a broadband service, you do have this device to give you that Wi-Fi out. And these are the products that we sell primarily for the uh, wireless operators. And these are people like, um, you know, Maxis Telcom BG in Malaysia. Uh, but we sell a lot of this, 95% of the revenue out of Malaysia in the six continents uh, of the world. Uh, yeah. So that's one. Uh, the other one, we do uh, IPTV set-top boxes. So this gives you your digital terrestrial television. We also do uh, smart mobility devices. And uh, this particular OBD device plugs into your car. So take it like a, a Fitbit for your car. And recently in Malaysia, over the COVID, you have seen a lot of our advertisements come out. And uh, what are these um, products will be on the right-hand side. So these are facial recognition access control devices. Uh, if you go to a supermarket, you will see that these devices also take your temperature control. Right? So uh, we sell a lot of this. Uh, we do facial recognition uh, cameras. These are for airports and uh, um, um, ministries. Uh, we also sell license plate recognition cameras. So instead of taking a ticket to actually get into your parking, we, we do the license plate recognition to just recognize your license plate and you're able to go in and out of the parking and make a cashless payment. 
Uh, we have also done um, facial recognition cameras, and this is for payment. So, for example, we do this in uh, schools, uh, whereby the school children cannot bring a mobile phone. Uh, and uh, what, what we do there is to have the children use the face to actually make that payment. So all in all, uh, this one we sell across six continents, about 70 countries. Uh, we have 100 odd uh, telecom customers uh, globally and uh, more than 10 million uh, devices shipped uh, over our history. Uh, moving on to the next slide will really be um, where we see is the serviceable addressable market. And uh, we position ourselves to be really the top five uh, global CPS suppliers uh, worldwide. Um, and uh, why this is so, right? If you look at even COVID, everybody is starting to work from home already. You will need broadband connectivity uh, more and more in the homes. And uh, because of that, then we also see a surge in people requiring the need for our devices, uh, i.e. our telecom operator partners. This is also an opportunity to tap into underserved markets. For example, uh, we have the education segment market. Uh, we also sell a lot to um, rural uh, broadband providers, and this is where you know uh, narrowing the digital divide. Uh, we are proud to say, in quarter three alone, we received uh, an order book of more than twenty three million, uh, and that we will deliver over quarter four, and uh, you know a little bit spill over to next year. So if you look at the um, fixed wireless market trend. Uh, this year we're for, uh, forecasting about 18 over million kind of uh, units to be shipped, right? Um, over the next five years, so about 34 uh, over million in the markets that we play with. So you can easily see there is a potential to even double the number of uh, shipments. Uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, earlier Ku mentioned that uh, we are looking at an acquisition in Silterra, and this is something that uh, we feel is a catalyst for growth. Um, really moving into the upstream segment of the device uh, business. Uh. Um, the the uh, Silterra wafer foundry, right, they do produce certain um, wafers that are very good for IoT, very good for 5G, whereby you do see huge demand coming up when uh, the whole 5G network is being set up. Uh. And this is, if, uh, we are able to now move for example, the Citara investment into higher value added activities away from the lower end of the testing, you know, and, and, and equipment of the E and E um, segment, right? So, so we see um good take up and uh, why why we interested because a lot of our suppliers in terms of the global supply chain that we we work with to get our devices out there, they are looking at um you know potentially chipsets from uh, Citara. Um, moving on to the next slide, this will be uh, our quarter three revenue. We ended the quarter with more than uh, nearly close to 26 million revenue uh, for this uh, particular segment. If you look at the September 2020 numbers, uh, we registered higher year on year again the same period last year, September, uh, of about uh, close to 7%. And uh, post uh, MCO, which hit a little bit of the China production in March and uh, towards May and uh, April and May. So you see that recovery in terms of both the, the both the production capability and the shipments. Uh, that's why we are able to uh, you know have one of our highest quarters over the last uh, last one year. Um, in terms of the EBITDA for September itself, if I will bring you to the orange color part, right? We were impacted close to about eight million by one of the projects that we had. It's a legacy project uh, of of two years back, uh, whereby it's really shipping for the DTT um switch off in Malaysia. So uh, because of some uh, extra delivery charges, because of MCO that we have to ship direct to the home rather than a batch uh, delivery, it gives us about 8 million. So that's a one-off that uh, actually hit us in uh, September. Uh, if I were to move on to our next pillar, which is actually our communication pillar, we actually operate this out of um, Singapore. So the whole team uh, is in Singapore. And uh, what we do on the communication front is really both voice and data traffic, uh, we are a wholesaler. So we buy from telecom operator A and sell it to telecom operator B, well, or maybe take another traffic from telecom operator B to C. So for example, Singtel, Singapore wants to transmit a voice or data traffic to Malaysia Maxis. They can actually connect direct or they connect through us, uh, through our whole hubbing um, engine. And we are able to do this better is because of our economy of scale. 
Uh, also, the fact that we are connected to more than 200 over global telecom operators already. So for one operator to connect to the other, they don't need to talk to 200 people. Uh. They just talk to us and we can do the interconnect. So we deliver about 2 over billion minutes uh, on a yearly basis. If, um, and uh, in terms of the serviceable, addressable market, uh, the, this continues to be a revenue generating uh, uh, arm for the group. It has uh, moved to profitability um, this quarter already. And uh, we have an opportunity to capture from the sort of 5-4% uh, mid-range target in terms of the serviceable, addressable market in this part of the world. We are more concentrated on ASEAN and uh, Asia. And uh, we see that there is an opportunity to go to about 15% uh, market share. Why so? A lot of the telecom operators are actually shutting down their own internal unit and they are Oh, and they are more and more going to rely on uh, players like us uh, to actually go on the hubbing traffic. Uh, as Ku mentioned earlier, uh, there's another portion of this business that not many people recognize, but it is really the A to P SMS. Uh. This is where when you do an authentication, the bank or some app send you an SMS to authenticate. And we do that, um, you know, the buying and selling of the app to the, to the app players. Uh. Now, uh, the catalyst for growth, as Ku mentioned earlier, for this communication segment is really, you know, the ability, the, all the power to actually build a hyperscale data center, right? Uh, what does it mean by a hyperscale data center? It's actually facilities that allow organizations to actually come to this facility, build out a, a data center quickly um, possible within the same location and in order to scale. So that you actually get large tenants coming into the data center rather than the small enterprise tenants are. And this is how uh, via the collaboration on communication, we have uh, uh, our relationship with most of the global carriers in the world and they're interested to actually have a landing point in Malaysia. That's one. Um, the second one is really we are our own uh, customer well, on the Tencent side. And the third part is because we have that very good um, opportunity in the AI part. And that land is in uh, you know, nearby TPM. You already have the dual power grid, so on and so forth, to actually build this uh, data center up easily. Uh, yeah. A uh, little bit on the communication highlights. Uh, we average around 130, 140 million ton of quarterly revenue for this one. Uh, in quarter, uh, starting from quarter one of this year, right, we have actually focused our target on more profitable routes. So therefore, you see that we managed to turn around this uh, pillar in terms of the EBITDA side, whereby uh, both um, quarter one and quarter three are positive. Uh, in June 2020, uh, we also wind down our B2C business in Singapore, which is actually an MVNO business. Uh. So that one we have uh, fully uh, shut down at, uh, that business. Um, it has impacted a little, a little bit in terms of the winding down cost in June. Uh, and uh, right now, it is a pure play voice and data business uh, for uh, communication side, right? Uh, moving on to the digital services side, uh, this is where we have uh, a few brands going out there. And this one, um, you know, for viewers out there, I think you will be slightly more familiar with this brand. Uh, it is the Kipple brand. And our promise in the Kipple brand is really digital services and beyond payments. Uh, we have four uh, brands that we went out to the market with. One, Kipple Base, this is your payment gateway that e-commerce operators use this particular payment gateway to actually get your e-commerce transactions from a Visa, MasterCard, uh, your online banking, and also the ability for all the major wallets to be uh, accepted in the payment gateway. Lah. So you have Boost, Touch and Go, Grab, uh, your Ali and your WeChat, both Malaysia a wallet and also China-based wallet on uh, Renminbi. Lah. Yeah. So that's our Kipple Base, our payment gateway. Uh, we also operate uh, Kipple Pay. And Kipple Pay is actually a B2C e-wallet that we are very specific in this uh, target segment. So we do we go to the education sector, and this is where uh, cashless campuses for universities is the target segment. Um, we enable the entire campus to be cashless, both on the things that the students use uh, from your makan, from your bookshop, from your laundry, from your mini market, all the way to the back end where uh, the university services, for example, your library, 
maybe small payments on your tennis court, uh, your uh, parking summon, so on and so forth. So we do a lot of integration with the university to enable the cashless campus to happen. Uh, the next brand is actually Keeper Home, which we have rebranded Keeper Life. And that's where you see a lot of the residential management services and also the office management services on both facial recognition, thermal sensor, and also an application to actually check in and check out of the particular premise that you go into. And it is also a communication app that, uh, that enables uh, all this to happen. Uh, Kipple Park is actually our license plate recognition, uh, whereby um, you tie the license plate and you don't need to even bring out your um, touch and go card or even um, uh, Visa Mastercard to do that wave on the, on the machine. And uh, definitely this is uh, entirely cashless. Uh. So we have a BM, a Bank Negara license running this, uh, our Visa Master uh, PCI DSS uh, certification, um, and the platform that we run on is uh, uh, MPGS and CyberSource from, from Visa. We also are able to provide a prepaid card tied to the wallet for this user. Yeah. Now, um, see, because this is also a digital services pillar, very important is the customer onboarding process, whereby the catalyst for growth, and you've seen uh, earlier who mentioned the acquisition of identity, this is where we are able to do a full digital onboarding process. Step one, you know, we take and authenticate the ID, be it your Malaysia IC or your passport. The second is we will take a selfie of uh, the person, match it against the ID to make sure that that person and the ID matches. Obviously, the ID has to be also authenticated with uh, various landmarks and so on and so forth. The third one is um, uh, we are able to, together with our uh, exclusive partner, CTOS, able to verify ID from the credit bureau. So you have a credit scoring. And the fourth part is really um, a live question to actually uh, get it on the uh, 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 so, so things that you know, like for example, um, what is the first uh, car loan? Which bank do you take your first car loan? So that verifies the entire process that you are you. And now you are able to fully digital uh, onboard to a certain application. Yeah. Or just, just add into case explanation, probably for you on EKYC, actually the easiest to understand Right now, if you wanted to open a bank account, you need to be physically present to, to, to the branch for them to verify your IC and you are the real person. For you to subscribe to a telecom service, you will also need to present yourself. But right now, this EKYC literally, because especially because of the pandemic, we got an MCO, a lot of people cannot be present physically. So literally, all this can be done digitally via our eKYC technology. So right now, that's why Ben and Gara have also issued uh, the framework and, and support. Actually, right now, you can go to bank using our identity or Kipper ID eKYC. You can open an account online. You can subscribe a telecom service online. You can pay anything online and your authentication on your ID is verified. So that is really the power of EKYC. And we are seeing a lot of tremendous growth on take up on this, especially uh, we all see, uh, you know, COVID-19 actually accelerated digital transformation adoption at least, you know, push forward for another five to seven years. Can we go back to the slide? Okay, um, the other catalyst for growth in the digital uh, services segment, uh, and this one um, who have elaborated and you have seen uh, our launch in July of this year, whereby we have actually signed up uh, the, the ability to actually run a cloud business together with Tencent. So we are practically the local link for the global Tencent cloud. Uh, um, and if you look at the players out there in the world, right, you have um, the top five being um, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Ali, and also Tencent. Um, some of the other players, even big, but they, they are nowhere near these giants. Are, for example, even um, 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 IBM and, uh, and Huawei. Huawei. Yeah. So um, in order to do well in this business, you actually need to have the global scale. Uh, what it means by the global scale is really the global nodes. When somebody signs up, you do have to have that low latency around the global network in order to operate a good cloud business. Uh, number one. 
Number two, you need the economy of your skill in terms of the technical know-how to actually keep the uh, the cloud um, up and running 24 by 7 with very, very strict um, SLAs. And the third is really the ability to procure uh, hardware space, uh, data center space on the cheapest possible because of, of the scale. And then you are able to offer this uh, this to the market at a very competitive price. So therefore, um, size does matter in here. And uh, we are very proud to say that we are the um, local partner for um, the, one of the top five, uh, which is uh, which is Tencent. Right. Um, it, uh, if you look at the cloud space here, and uh, some of you may not be able to see this if it's too small, but let me just read it out in terms of um, the top to the bottom, which is the pink to the to the purple in this part of the slide. Now. Um, managed services is actually one part of the revenue on the cloud um, side. The second would be security services, i.e. your cyber security and so on and so forth. Uh, the third is infrastructure as a service, and this is where uh, we rent out um, server space. So rather than you buy 10 server, keep it in your own server room, you can actually rent that server space from cloud operators like us uh, under the Tencent brand or um, platform as a service, which is really um, what we have also done on our end. For example, Kipple Biz, uh, the, the payment gateway is actually a platform as a service. Uh, our Kipple Pay white, uh, white label is actually a platform as a service. And um, Tencent does have about 200 odd um, services that are able to be localized in Malaysia to be um, um, actually offered to uh, companies in Malaysia. So that's platform as a service. And also you have software as a service. So these are the five revenue streams that a cloud service operator is able to offer. And uh, yeah, these all five services are the ones that we want to go out to the market to, to actually offer when we build the, the, the entire end-to-end -end cloud um, offerings. Uh, the digital services in terms of the revenue, uh, we hit about 1.4 million uh, uh, in terms of the top line uh, this quarter. This is still an investment uh, uh, pillar for us. Lah. So we foresee for the next four quarters, we will continue to invest in this uh, pillar and the uptake will come in uh, 2022. Lah, yeah. um, the two businesses that are revenue generating here is really the e-commerce business, which we see a spike even during MCO. Uh, the people pay wallet business actually stagnated over the last two quarters uh, because uh, actually the universities are not open. Lah. So when that um, um, universities um, get open back, then we foresee that the cashless transactions will go back to the normal level like uh, in, in March. Right? Yeah. All right, looking ahead, uh, actually I, I really wanted to share with you, uh, Green Packet had gone through a, a really a long-term journey. As I say, this year is our 20 year anniversary. And there's also, this is also a very important milestone year that uh, we are planning actually for the future. We have built uh, Green Packet over the last 20 years, as I would say. We were the first unicorn in Malaysia. Of course, you know, uh, they were up and down uh, in terms of journey. Uh, we, we really take a spade a spade. I mean, there are, there are certain things that we can do better, but definitely over the last uh, three years after we divest uh, P1 or VB to Telecom Malaysia, they clean up all our balance sheet. Uh, balance sheet. We are really having the whole group actually building for the future. And 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 I just wanted to share with you, right? These are really the five core pillar uh, for the whole group moving into our Green Packet 5.0 journey uh, for our next five years. Uh, 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 probably for you, a lot of you that have been invested with us, a lot of you are looking at us, wow, you guys are doing a lot of good things, uh, but when is that going to turn profitable? When is that are you going to show the result, right? So, so we are a company that is really investing for long term, but also at the same time, we believe that, you know, uh, a year to year uh, uh, performance is very important. That's why you can see from all financial, we are improving quarter on quarter. But I also want to share with you the very two key observation. You are looking at even Amazon, right? Amazon being the world largest e-commerce company, 
but their first 10 years or even first 12 years, they were all not making and investing for future. Then those are in the US. You know, closer to the home, you are looking at group, uh, the, the unicorn of Southeast Asia, um, Grab, right? After many, many years, they are still investing because it's a long-term investment, you know, with a great vision and they, uh, they try to build on. Shopee is the largest uh, right now leading uh, e-commerce company in Southeast Asia. If you are looking at them, they are still uh, 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 investing. Uh, they are talking about losses actually over uh, uh, more than a billion ringgit a year just for the e-commerce, e right? So of course we are not uh, uh, looking at them uh, because definitely they, they, are, they are building for the whole Southeast Asia. But on Green Packet, we believe that uh, we have built up uh, a transform on all our legacy business to have high growth either from the device uh, solution uh, and also to the uh, uh, communication services with the hyper skilled data center that definitely is going to uh, not only profitable and existing business but gear up for high growth in the future right and our uh, fintech business and financial services uh, with the digital bank license that we are applying, we are very confident that uh, we, we will be able uh, to get the license for the future, so to complete our ecosystem. And uh, with smart devices, uh, we have turned around in the last quarter, and with the acquisition of Cetera, it will boost, you know, for end-to-end -end the device ecosystem. And we are, you know, with our associate company, uh, uh, AI uh, 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 CT, right? So we also have a new division that combine the technology and the, and the real estate development together. So these are going to be a five future uh, um, uh, key pillar of business division that will support the green packet hyper growth uh, for us to uh, uh, move in the year 2021. So, uh, uh, and another a key message that I wanted to share with you, if you are looking at all the world leading company are talking about sense time. Sense time is the world number one AI company. They choose our associate company, G3, to be the exclusive partner, right? Uh, why they make that choice, right? In Malaysia, there are many, many companies they can go to. Why do they choose G3 and the arrangement is exclusive? Tencent being the world number one, no, sorry, Tencent being the largest company in the whole Asia. The market cap is more than 6 trillion Hong Kong dollar. Uh, why they are choosing to partner with Green Packet, right? And all these world leading number one company, they are choosing Green Packet and our associate company to be the partner because they have done the due diligence, the confidence that we have our long-term strategy mapped out very well, and we also have the team and execution capability that will support the vision, and we are riding on all these total giant to have all these core five business division, club and data center, investment whereby you were looking at it, our acquisition of Cetera is via GP Capital so that we can attract, you know, inflow of the fund, even the fund that committed to 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 pack the money with green, green packet capital and acquire for Cetera is the largest PE fund called China Orange Asset Management. They are the Tana Hustle of China, managing more than 150 billion uh, US dollar. And also on our Kipper X, we are also investing for the future. And our digital and financial services uh, with all the 10 cent clubs software as a platform, we have a digital bank coming on board, we are very, very confident, and our smart devices, we are moving upstream, right, even with on the chipset, so that we can have end-to-end -end, uh, hardware ecosystem and supply chain, the support on our future growth, right, and uh, smart city, we are very, very good, the first start, right, uh, it's just that, you know, over the last couple of months, we have received the letter of intent from government, to develop the 315 acres land in Bukit Jale, right opposite Pavilion 2. So we are combi combining the best of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, the exponential technology that anchor the growth of uh, 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 green packets and also with realizing all those 
uh, exponential technology uh, to improve the life of Malaysian, right? Uh, to deliver life improving digital innovation because that is really the, the, the purpose and, and, and green packet vision uh, to bring our country uh, and also our company to the next level. All right, thank you. You can now move to uh, the moderators for the question and answer session. Thank you. Yeah, hi. Uh, okay, so thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, I'm actually looking at a lot of questions right now from the viewers. Um, actually, most of the questions are already answered either from the slide or from what CC Point have just mentioned. But I think what I would like to put forth is to try and group them, you know, one by one. And for you, if you don't mind to answer again in a, in a very focused manner. Um, okay, so firstly, one of the questions that I, I see all the time is that Green Packet, uh, you know, you guys are doing so many things and it is actually quite complicated for investors to understand it as a whole. Um, some businesses are actually like, you know, out of um, a lot of our area of competency, right? Um, and the question is, with so many things um, that you guys are doing varying from your legacy businesses to the startup companies like the PropTech and the FinTech and all the new ventures into cloud businesses, AI Park and all this. Um, how do you guys focus and ensure that everything is running as smoothly and as aligned as, and, as possible? And, you know, I think a lot of us are also wondering, um, what is actually Green Packet's ultimate goal and mission and vision for the company? So maybe I'll, I'll just leave it at that first. Yeah. Um, I think if I can just uh, take the question and then uh, Kay and uh, Siti can add on. I think our focuses are very clear. Siti has already laid out that there are the five areas. Uh, we have to remember that we are a little bit of a hybrid organization. We have two pioneering pillars that are legacy businesses for the last 20 years. So that's the solution business, which is essentially software and devices. And then we have the communication business. Now, these two pillars have improved quarter on quarter, and in the quarters to come, we would like to be able to add on new catalysts for growth. So in the case of solution, that possible catalyst of growth will be the Filtera acquisition, and for communication, it will be the data center. Uh, what is important is, in the last three years, we are investing into the new space, the digital services space, and that's where we are adding uh, EKYC, that's where we are adding uh, what you call the cloud-based services. And that's where the major growth is going to come. If you ask us where are the cash generating growth that's going to come in the next one year, EKYC will be one of them. Cloud services, we're hoping to be able to roll out by the end of quarter one and you know should fully roll out the market in quarter two. Those will be more cash generating. The data center and all that will take a little bit more time, but in time to come, it will create recurring income for us. And for both data center as well as cloud services, we are expecting it to be positive in terms of cash flow in two years' time. So yes, uh, we are in a situation where we are putting in a lot of investment, but our focuses are very clear. We know which segments uh, we will be positive. We know which segments that we're investing, and we know when as a group, this turnaround is likely going to be happening. Yeah. Um, would CC Point like to add on it or, uh, or Rondi? Are you satisfied? Yeah. 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 Uh, probably I want to add on a little bit more. If I'm looking at Green Packet, uh, uh, especially I, I wish to share with you, uh, a lot of us are really looking at you know, investing based on the previous track record and also looking at the potential of growth uh, in the future. So Green Packet Group, if you are looking at us, we are quite diversified, right? We have been around forever, uh, for 20 years. So our traditional business on the solution and communication are all profitable and will also have a high growth uh, with our transformation. Uh, adding on, on Cetera in the solution, uh, the 5G devices are all high growth area. On the communication, we get into cloud and data center. 
uh, even the underlying business is already more than 500 million, but all the new component will be the, the, the further growth component. All the new businesses are also, we have proven the traction and also the revenue and the profitability are, are already being seen in the very, very near future. So you are investing actually in, a, in the back of both world. At one, one hand, very strong cash flow, from the traditional business and a very and add on the high growth component plus all our uh, new businesses as, as you can see uh, all the traction are in. so we are really in a very very sweet spot uh, is the right time for you to really look at us seriously thank you moderator okay yes, so go ahead with the question um, so I think just to give everyone a very uh, clear understanding um, on G Packets business because now it's so diversified and you're trying to go into new venture and you're thinking there will be a huge growth from that. So maybe let's just clear up in five years time, right? Where do you see your company G Packet in five years time? Uh, if you can name the top three core business that you wish G Packet to become in the next three years time. Could it be the, um, the AI park? Uh, could it be the, you know, keep home? Or could it be, you know, other segment? So maybe you can name in three years' time the three top core business. Sorry, in five years' time, the three top core business that you are transitioning G Packet into. What would be the three uh, core business? Uh, actually, I think that that is a very good question. But if I'm looking at the overall design of the whole group, as I shared in the last slide, right, we really have five major business pillars, right, uh, from solution and also the smart devices that is already also have very, very high growth potential. Uh, the communication plus the data center, it will also contribute to significant revenue and also the future profitability. And also on our uh, uh, financial services or the new digital services, uh, we deserve bank that we are very, very confident that we, even without with or without digital bank, we will be offering all the financial services as if we are already a bank because we are a financial institution on people that being licensed by the bank Negara. and also on our cloud business. As we say, if you are looking at Tencent Cloud on the worldwide, for the last three years, they have been growing at triple digit. Right, so we are very confident that even on cloud, we are riding on the uh, giant shoulder, and we have ten years exclusivity not only on the business but the exclusive use of the ten cent cloud. Of course, the fifth element is really uh, the smart city and the urban type. We are we have been given three hundred fifty acres of land that that they, the, the, the 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 most prominent. The pavilion too. Uh, so, so if you really ask me to choose three, uh, and and really couldn't give you because all the five pillars I will be experienced. You know, will be all both profitable and also um, uh, um, And I also want to share with you again. We call a unicorn river. Just imagine year two thousand five when I leave company, our market. Right? Uh, in first company in 2005. But on first quarter of 2007, become the first unicorn. Our market boom from 150 million, you know, a 20 in less than two years. So, exactly the, the about 600. We had our previous track record. Last time, we will only have that solution and communication, and, and we have a, a three billion market cap. Moving forward to 2021, we are 600 million market cap now. All the five high growth, we uh, are a lot more experienced, and 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 you can see today, my team are really the top uh, team. Uh, like uh, with the government, uh, Dr. James, uh, uh, Smart City, and on the uh, 
was the president and he was CEO of his country. So we are attracting top talent to help us to really execute what we have. The whole group, the whole five. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, sound just now was breaking, but I let me rephrase. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, G Packet has a very good track record. It's been around for many, many years, um, more than 20, 20 years, right? And um, you grew from a small market cap company into big market cap. And over the years, you have already built up a lot of track record. That's why you're able to secure so many uh, huge projects. Even Tencent is working with you and um, the AI uh, CP. Uh, AI Park, right? All this, right? Uh, am, I, am I correct? Because that's how the line was breaking. That was what I. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good okay. We can move on to the next question. Yeah. Can okay. we move on to the next question? Yeah. So, Sisipan, I know, I know that uh, just now you guys have touched on, you know, your profitability and stuff like that. But can I perhaps just ask you to again to reiterate from, you know, because I have a lot of questions on on this portion you know um well it's you know in the last 12 years right there are only two years in which green packet um achieved annual profitability so perhaps this is why the market is quite concerned when it comes to investing in the company for long term you know so um i guess where we are where where, where i'm trying to come from is that what is the what's the management's plan to get um green packet back in the black and you know which business um will contribute to the profitability. I know you actually have mentioned this. And um, when can we expect this to happen? Um, and, you know, will will this profitability be sustainable this time around? Uh, because, you know, uh, people always say that a guesstimate is better than uh, no estimate at all in terms of trying to understand and value your company. Uh, if, if you are looking at, you know, uh, just give you a very simple uh, uh, calculation, right? If you are looking at on our ownership, even on our uh, uh, ownership on G3, we own 28%. Uh, at the time as when we incubate uh, this company uh, by acquiring them and turn them into an AI company, we only invested for the four million. Today, actually, the 44 million investment has grown to more than 500 million worth, right? It's just that we have not much market because it's a long-term investment. So we are looking at, if we are translating profit from 44 million investment to go to more than half a billion, we already have a profit of more than 400 million uh, uh, on the value day. Right, so that also demonstrate uh, actually if we just revalue on our asset in G3, we are already profitable from the extraordinary gain. But uh, building business, you see, the traditional business is already profitable, right? And the new business we only invested for three years, right? Uh, uh, on fintech and also financial services and digital. And, and we believe that it will not be more than, you know, within the next one or two years around. We revalue our investment. Actually, the whole group actually is already generated so much profit over the last three, four years. So I just wanted the, the investor and the audience that darling today to really have a deep dive. Actually, you know, by all measure, we are executing uh, the plan and very very well and and every month right every quarter you see our revenue continue to, to grow on double digit and our uh, and our losses even without taking into account our investment is narrowing every quarter right while our expenses is still growing so that is already a very very good sign so we believe that you know, the revenue. And the and the losses, the gap is narrowing every quarter. So from the trend, you can see is very very clear in terms of visibility. So uh, we are we are very confident that the 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 gap is getting narrower, and hopefully in the next uh, foreseeable, I'm thinking about next.
three or four quarter, uh, all the businesses uh, will be open profitable. Just want to add on to what Siti is saying, uh, what he's illustrating is actually so, a uh, segment, uh, it's actually called the sum of class computation. So, if you look at the, the segments of the company and you value it on a discounted cash flow basis based on profitability in the number of years to come by a, a certain sector, then purely on the green packet business, today the stock should be valued at double of what it is valued in the market. And if you add the G2 global component, it should be triple of what is in the market using a sum of parts. Uh, but the sum of parts valuation uh, would be based not on earnings, right? Because at the moment there is actually no earnings. Or is this going to be based on future earnings that you're, you know, you're, based on your calculation? Yeah, we, we, uh, we suggest, right, um, if you were to do a calculation, uh, the existing um, three contributing pillars of the business, which is uh, solution uh, number one, communication number two, and the digital services. Uh, what, what we do is that um, take a five year view on this, uh, do up uh, a cash flow, and the simplest part to do the cash flow is really on the, uh, let's, let's just say, EBITDA, for example, right? Um, take that um, and uh, what uh, we do on our hurdle rate is maybe let's say 8.4% hurdle rate with a 2% terminal value. So you'll come up to a number uh, if you do our projections. Uh, um, that's one uh, in terms of the existing businesses. Uh, the other two uh, businesses that we talked about earlier in terms of the revenue generation is really on the EKYC side and also the Tencent Club side. Now, uh, EKYC alone, um, the profitability in terms of the gross margins is uh, quite high. It's uh, more than 70-80% uh, of gross margin. So that one is a very good revenue contributor that you will see starting in the next quarter to come. Um, so again, um, we and this this is a business that when you do EKYC, it's also a recurring part to it. The second one is really extension crop. Tencent Club, we are starting the revenue generation coming from uh, May. And uh, again, do a five year discounted cash flow um, on this business. Um, look at the global benchmarks. On Club business, the global benchmark is around uh, sort of a 60% kind of return. And we expect this to come in in year two after launch. Up. Year one, because we are launching halfway, which is uh, May 2021, right? By 2022, this will go steady state in beta of about 60 percent And uh, this one, you, you, you can do some research and global benchmark on this is about 60 percent kind of beta. Yeah. So add that all together, um, mainly we do suggest the discounted um, cash flow. Yeah. Okay, so I guess um, I guess what we have just discussed is uh, basically on how to value green packet, right? And we are saying that we should do a sum of parts because there are so many different businesses and business parts of the company. Um, and if you add them up together, uh, the value of the entire in, in, in the entirety would be about maybe double from where it is at the moment. Okay. So if you add the yeah, sorry, if you add the G3 uh, valuation, right, which uh, in our books today, that valuation, like just now CC mentioned, is, is not even mentioned. If you do a mark to market, that alone is, I think, uh, 50, the 600 odd million. So you're talking about adding another 50 odd cent yeah. just to the sum of parts uh, alone. Uh, so that's something I'm uh, thinking about. Yeah, so um, to answer that, two times plus the G3. So that, yeah, that, that, that's even the yeah. I would prefer to be conservative like, because G3 is very illiquid. But yeah, I, I understand where you guys are coming from. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I think in terms of the new business part, just now as mentioned, the EKYC and the Tencent Club, these two business, is it safe to say that it's pretty sure that you will start to see positive contribution from them in the next one year? Um, it, I mean, like, is there already secured deal like EKYC, has the partnership with the banks, all these already been established? Um, and also for the Tencent Club, um, have you already targeted um, the customer? Is it secure? I think this too is already um, an ongoing business. It's definitely is going to be launched. So is it safe to say that we will definitely see some positive contribution from these two segments in the next one year? Yes, definitely. Um, and uh, to answer the EKYC portion of the business first, 
uh, it is uh, because the the entity uh, is is under a, a SPE uh, called I mean the brand is an entity uh, right. Uh, at the moment, we have not completed the acquisition, so that's why you don't see the reflection of the profit into the group yet. Like Ku mentioned, uh, we should be completing by uh, either end of this year or early part of next year, and then that uh, immediate reflection will be into the, the bottom line. Uh. So uh, it's not completed yet, so it's not there, but their business is ongoing already. And that business is today um, quite uh, robust in terms of the take-up is uh, due to the recent announcement by Bank Negara, uh, whereby they allow uh, you know KYC and digital onboarding. So that's one part. Um, immediate contribution when we when we close the close the entire acquisition. Uh. Uh, the second one on Tencent Cloud, uh, we are planning to launch the cloud business in Q2, as we mentioned. And how this is done, right? Uh, first, you have to procure the servers, and we are going through that procurement process right now. Uh, and when you set up the cloud business, uh, we don't need to do up the infrastructure. We just need to rent the the data whole uh, the data center space uh, from colo operators. Uh. So you have you know all sorts of colo operators in Malaysia with a ready data center. So we put in the the uh, the hardware uh. now. Where would all these customers come from, right? That's why we are so aggressive going into the segments that we are already selling now. Either the e-commerce uh, operators that we sell our payment gateway to, uh, so we can upsell the cloud service. The second is really the university segment that uh, we do keep the keep away business. So as universities move their data to the cloud, this is also a, 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 an upsell, uh, you know, for us. And the third one is uh, really the partnership with Tencent, right? Uh, they do have uh, their gaming business, there's a lot of uh, data of cloud capacity. And uh, being the local uh, 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 link for Tencent Cloud in Malaysia, uh, the, they, they will definitely switch wherever they have out of the country uh, to in country. Uh. And the key catalyst is really um, the latency. Uh. I guess on the gaming, you know, people that are on MMO game, latency is very important, right? So obviously they will host their servers uh, locally in Malaysia for Malaysian players uh, at least. Yeah. So the summary of the Tencent Cloud really is that the uh, the work the RFP in terms of securing the data center space, the RFP in terms of the server equipment, that's ongoing. At the same time, the go-to-market is already happening because we have existing customers that we can sell to. So therefore, uh, we're quite confident that by end of quarter one, we're going to see some of this revenue start to come in and certainly in quarter Onwards. Yeah, because you already have existing clients that you know you can upsell to. Okay, so that's right. Uh, let, me, let me pass the next question to you. Okay, um, I think I would like to touch on um, Silterra because we have <laughs> a lot and a lot of questions about Silterra, yeah. Um, and I know that the, the word has been uh, coming out uh, many times over the presentation. So on Siltara, um, you know. There are actually a couple of questions with regards to this. Um, maybe let me just try and link everything. You know, the firstly, firstly is like um, on Siltera, what is the rationale behind the bidding of Siltera? And what is the competitive advantage of Siltera, Siltera as compared to other wafer foundry? Um, like what is their capability right now? Can they do like seven nanometer chips? And on the thirdly is, uh, what are the chances of you winning the bid? Fourth, um, what can Green Packet bring to the table that shareholders like Kazana couldn't, which will allow Siltera to be finally a profitable company? And lastly is, um, if let's say you get um, Siltera, what's the plan for it? And how is Green Packet going to fund this? I know that um, from recent news, this would be linked to the Bumitech fund. So perhaps you can also touch on that as well. Sorry for, sorry for right. having too many questions. I'm just trying to cramp everything into one. Yeah, let me, let me attempt to try to uh, address them and then uh, Kay and uh, Siti can also jump in. Siltera is actually a very important part of the Malaysian E&E ecosystem, right? It is the only wafer fabrication uh, company in Malaysia that can produce 350,000 uh, what you call uh, wafers in a year. Now, you mentioned about 7NM, and it's interesting because we are not going into that space. Tiltera works on a 8-inch wafer, and the 8-inch wafer is very 
in demand right now because of AI and IoT, right? And so the sensing technology, uh, the power logic and all that, that is where the 8-inch actually plays very well in. So we're not competing with the Koreans or the Taiwanese in the most leading, bleeding edge of technology, which goes into man, it goes into your uh, cell phones and all that. We're not going to the space, but we're going into the AI IoT space, which is a very fast growing space. So it's, it's really sweet spot. And Tukera is also located in the Northern Corridor where Kulin is, and then there's Bayan La Paz, there's Batu Kawan and all that. Now, we are co-investing together with domestic and foreign partners that are able to bring value to Tukera by bringing the value chain. So for example, when we have the foreign partners coming in to do product design, they can tap into the IT designer pool in the Northern Corridor, which amounts to about four to 5,000 of them. Then we have the entire Tutera place in the front end in terms of wafer fabrication and the production of microchips. And we have a fantastic back end. Um, normally we don't mention names of uh, the other people, but your names like Great Tech, J.F. Franken, Inari Emerson, Amelus, they all play in the back end space. So we feel very confident that if we are able to bring the network, the demand from the overseas market into uh, the Northern Corridor, then Tutera will be able to optimize its utilization very quickly. And then we need to go into some technology refresh so that we can continue to play very well in the AI and the IoT space. Uh, what is our chance? We believe that we're putting a very competitive bid. We obviously, for confidential reason, we cannot disclose what the structure or the pricing of the bid is. But we are very confident because the bid, as we know it, is extremely competitive. Uh, what we bring to the table that perhaps the current owners are not able to is, like I mentioned, we bring in the demand, we bring in the people who want to do the product design. They are able to tap on our talent here. They are able to tap on our value chain and we are able to bring and grow the entire system. So maybe the current set of the owners does not have the connection and the network to be able to do that, but we certainly can do that. In terms of funding, like you rightly mentioned, this is being uh, uh, what you call the bid is through the Bumi Tech Fund. And because it's going through a fund, our direct interest in the bid itself is not as large as people think it is. But nonetheless, we bring in the local understanding, we bring in foreign partners, we bring in other strategic local partners, and together we will be able to grow that ecosystem. And when we grow that, it's extremely positive for the country, for the EAE sector, for the semiconductor sector, and for the GDP of the country as well. Can I, can I just have a follow-up question to the Bumitech Fund, uh, Mr. Ku? And perhaps after that, uh, you can maybe uh, chip in as well. So um, on, on the Bumitech Fund, right, um, can you explain a little bit more about the fund's purpose? I know that the, the, the media article um, have mentioned quite a bit, uh, but perhaps we would like to hear it from you, from yourself as well. And um, what is the planned role for Green Packet under this fund? Um, how much are you willing to commit to the fund? Is it the 100 million which is mentioned? And how is this portion will be funded uh, by Green Packet? Um, and what is the plan ROI, you know, for, for the investment in the fund? Um, and lastly, has has the fund and our Green Packet identified any other potential investment for this? Um, because um, is there actually enough Bumi players in this space? and Or is the fund a bit too restricted in its investment criteria? Okay, so the fund, the first tranche of the fund is uh, we're targeting 500 million. Our commitment to the fund as the sponsor partner uh, is 100 million. We will not go beyond 20%, and we are inviting other partners to come in. This can be foreign, and this can be Malaysian public sector uh, funds as well, because it will be good to have public sector and private sector collaborating together. In terms of the target uh, potential investing company, uh, there is about 18.5% of tech-listed company on Bursa Malaysia uh, that, that, uh, that may be ideal investing companies because these are companies that um, may have for a long time relied on concession. Uh, they have global ambitions. They want to play in the regional space. 
uh, but that ambition is not necessarily matched with the uh, uh, capacity and the capital that they have. So we are able to bring in our professional capacity as well as the capital to upscale them. And we are looking at a 20 to 25% return over a five year period. And the idea is that eventually, because this is a fund, we will exist. And therefore, it is in our interest to put our skin in the game, put in the professional capacity, scale them up, and exit with a profit of about two and a half times. Yeah, maybe, maybe just to add on a little bit, uh, Rondi, in terms of the fund, when we envisioned this fund, uh, it was really f uh, uh, a technology focus. I think we are out and out technology company. Over our history, we, we managed to uh, build our own technology. Uh, we are part of the, the entire um, technology ecosystem in the TMT space. And uh, like uh, CC mentioned earlier, the global tech giants actually come to us. To, to look at, um, you know, having us being the conduit for ASEAN expansion. So when we have all these uh, ingredients in space, uh, in place, and uh, rightly so, uh, that you mentioned earlier, um, we have, uh, we are so diverse, we have so many things. We cannot continue to keep uh, doing so many things, right? So we decided, hey, let's build a fund. And uh, not only do we then bring capital to the investee companies that we envision to bring them uh, towards ASEAN uh, uh, regionalization, we will also bring technology partnership. We will also bring uh, the community around this technology to them so that you know, we can also help them scale. So that's a two-pronged approach, uh, both um, capital uh, 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 contribution and also technology contribution. Yeah, so that's that's the idea and the purpose of the fund. And like who mentioned, um, why why Bumi Putra? I think um, in Malaysia you do have very good companies in Malaysia. They are quite focused in this part of the world. Uh, and Malaysia has actually encouraged a lot of these companies via a PPP partnership, right? And this same model, this same type, it can be uh, 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 value added so that uh, you know with the rest of the other cutting edge type that we bring to. Uh, Parts of, uh, of uh, ASEAN, at least. Yeah, we hope we have covered all the uh, related questions. With that um, shall we move on to the next question? Yeah, sure. So we have about eight more minutes. Um, I think I'll ask the last question from me, Rondi. If you have any other question, you can ask later. If not, then we can do a closing remark. Um, so yeah. yes, the last question will come from the AI City, which is very interesting and is such a huge project. Um, because now it's a letter of intent, my question is two. Number one is, how confident are you that this letter of intent will actually go through as a something that is actually being implemented? Because uh, in Malaysia, there are many projects that was announced, but the implementation may be bumpy. So that's number one. Um, and, or what challenges or obstacles do you see in that? Or why do you feel confident that will go through? Number two is, when it's actually being materialized, how do you envision this city to look like and um, how, how will you work this AI city? Okay, um, right now if you are looking at, you know, it just in month of October, we received the LOI from government uh, in terms of lateral of uh, intent. Actually, we have participated uh, in a tender or a request for proposal from the government. Uh, actually, it had took us actually uh, uh, more than a year on, on this project. And uh, definitely the government are really, uh, 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 already decided this project must go ahead. And, and actually the land has been already clear uh, for the future development. So we have been selected and really we are going to design this AI city is going to be uh, the future city. Uh, you can imagine, you know, if uh, in the next 20 years, how will our house, how will our life, you know, the way that we uh, live, the way that we play, the way that we work, the way we learn, will be very, very different, right? Today, we already feel it with this COVID-19. So, uh, uh, so the whole uh, city will be feel and power with uh, what we shared just now, the ABCDFG. So from day one, you have AI, 
uh, surveillance security camera to make sure you know you are protected and security. And the second thing, you know, everything will be transparent, powered by blockchain. We are starting the AI city actually with a uh, uh, hyper skill data center, right? That will be able to host all sort of uh, 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 services, you know, on, on digital. Uh, to put it simply, uh, uh, when you walk in uh, this city, uh, even on the retail uh, or, or in a shopping mall in this uh, uh, AI city, you will have the best uh, 3D, 4D cinema, uh, even with augmented uh, reality AR and also virtual re re reality, you will have the best sport arena in the city. Uh, whereby you know your 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 uh, blood pressure, uh, your heartbeat, you know your health condition will be observed by all the uh, 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 sensor uh, to make sure that you are going to be healthy, you have better life, and uh, all the renewable energy uh, you will be powered by all green uh, energy is going to be zero carbon uh, uh, for the city. So, so, so uh, even this city in the next 20, 30 years to come, you will continue and enjoy the best of the technology going to be to empower and enriching the way that you live, work, learn, play, and also, you know, uh, give you the longevity. Long living in this city, expecting, you know, the life you're going to live beyond 100 years old. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sisi Puan. So, Rondi, do you have any oh. last question? If no, then we can go for a closing remarks. Okay. Since I, yeah, I will just have one last question, which I think is also another question which is always being raised. Um, so, Green Packet team, I think, um, you know, financial wise, we noticed that Green Packet has always conducted um, a lot of equity fundraising exercises. Um, in the past few years, right, there was there was a rights issue um, which was completed in at the end of two zero one eight, and then there was a ten percent of um, new shares issuance which was completed recently, and then there is another ten percent of new issuance again, which um, was going to complete at, at the end of this year or early next year. So I guess, um, and also not not apart from that, there is still the warrant, right? So. From the investor perspective, you know, while we are glad that the company is able to continuously finance its expansion via equity funding, but it also means that, sub, you know, um, those people might be diluted, right? Um, can you maybe share with us, um, will there be any more round of new equity fundraising that is going to come in the next one or two years? And if yes, I guess it's it's basically to fund everything that you guys have mentioned, right? Yeah, sure. Um, um, yeah, maybe allow me to, to take this question, right? Uh, I think our fundraising is uh, uh, quite targeted uh, when we, whenever we do this. Uh, and if you look at our recent private placement fundraising uh, in terms of the use of proceeds, right? Uh, it is actually to fund the two new businesses that we, are already, we have already announced, uh, which is the Tencent Club business. Uh, in terms of a certain portion of the equity. Uh, the second part is really on the expansion of the uh, digital services business from the fintech and protech side. Uh. So these two recent fundraising is very targeted I mean, to, to do this. Uh, and on the Tencent Cloud side, uh, we're also happy to say because of the legacy um, EMTN exchange uh, with Telecom Malaysia, it has cleaned up our balance sheet. So the balance of the Tencent Cloud, um, we are going to raise the financing via debt. Lah. Um, uh, earlier, three, four years, we couldn't do it because of this large overhang on the on the debt portion. So now we are we are able to do already. Um, now, we also talked about some of our uh, potential investments that we are doing, um, which is the, uh, uh, what you call it, the Silterra. And that one, we have done it via a fund management structure, whereby we are the general partner and we are taking in uh, Limited partners to put in the money for the for the acquisition. So that sort of ring fence. 
Uh, we also talk about um, going into the data center business. Now, getting into the data center business is something that we are planning. We are talking to many, many interested parties. And if you look at the global expansion of data center, uh, this is a very hot uh, space right now for a lot of private equity funds. Uh, most of them are looking at investment in this space. And very recently in Singapore, I think the country has actually stopped issuing or stopped uh, giving out um, data center licenses because of the uh, con space constraint in Singapore and also the uh, the power consumption is quite high, right? So that one is the spillover effect of Malaysia and we are looking to actually partner uh, either with private activity guys or people who actually have uh, demand for data center space and uh, we are we are we are designing the structure in such a way that uh, very little funding should come from us because the fact that we are a land owner we can barter the land to actually um, come up with a structure so that one takes care of the um, um, data center financing um, hopefully that answers your question but as green packet um, Whenever a business opportunity comes into play, we do look at it very, very deeply. And if we feel this is a disrupting technology, this one is really a sunrise a business that uh, we can actually get into, uh, then we may come back to the equity market to raise funds as a seed capital normally, right? Uh, but at the moment, uh, the businesses that we talked about, we have sort of designed the fundraising both on the debt side and also on uh, outside equity investment side now, at the SPV level so it doesn't touch the uh, the, the holding co level except the, the final uh, private placement that uh, we have not completed the balance five percent yeah yeah okay so uh, after right. prior sharing um, my takeaway would be you know you cannot just look at green packet as a traditional company where um, you look at the net profit and the dividend you should look at it more as a tech company and um, like a startup company, like many like C Limited, um, even initially um, Alibaba, all these, they were working loss, but the valuation is increasing. So in a way, the shareholder is profiting from another perspective. Um, so as a closing remark, Mrs. Tisipuan, uh, what would be the key takeaway that you want our audience to walk away with let's say if there's one thing they can remember about the future uh, of green packet from this entire sharing uh, in a very summarized form can you share with us what do you want people to remember about uh, g packet as an investment company uh really our team today is rebirth of a unicorn right uh, we did that uh, 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 in two, 2007, 13 years ago. So it's a full cycle. If you are really looking at us, it's really a unicorn river. Uh, we believe that in very, very short time, uh, in the next one or two years, uh, we were uh, breaking our previous record. Uh, so it's really the best time that you see our company have built all the right high growth components and also anchor with the cash flow of the uh, legacy business. So we are really the best of both worlds. Uh, uh, and, and right now is really the sweet spot uh, for you to uh, invest in our company. Okay, thank you. So I guess I'll um, end this Facebook Live. So guys, um, thank you very much for staying with us all the way until the end of this Facebook Live. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and love this sharing. Moving forward, please um, go and follow G Packet's company's progress. You can follow it via using the Stock Big app. Anytime the company has announcement, it will automatically be generated there. Or if you like this kind of interview, you can go ahead to click like and follow my page or go to my Telegram group, t.me slash savvy. The next time we have a, another company to come on um, for this kind of interview session, we will notify you at the Telegram group. Thank you very much for watching all the way until the end. Um, I hope to see you in the next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.